You should just leave it for a minute. <laughs> Partridge family. No, 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 no. Guys, welcome to Friday's Talking Truck Show. Normally, we do this on Thursday afternoons, but it's a special week because we had a lot of travel and a lot of new trucks. I'm Andre, and this is... Kit with MrTruck.com. I got my rocking cowboy wh seat. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. This is National Western Stock Show. I'm all excited. <laughs> I'm only back in the saddle again. Hell yeah. So in Denver, we have this stock show that's always happening in January, right? Not in camera. You're... You're hogging the camera. No, it's zoomed oh. in. Oh, I see. It's I see. see, it's normal. Uh, look look yeah, at this. Yeah, right. But guys, today we're talking about news, truck news, and then also answering truck questions. Oh, there's so much truck news. Yes. Oh, my God. We thought the half ton was big last year. These heavy duty, super duty, they're just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Tundra prototype that we, or not we, that some spy photographers, Brian Williams, uh, captured in Michigan, in, in Ann Arbor, near the Toyota facilities. Uh, did you see these images? Yeah, that's the one that's wearing a kilt? Yes. Yes, <laughs> it's, I saw the kilt. It's probably Scottish. <laughs> no, but what we're talking about is the camouflage on the new Tundra. And this is basically the first time this prototype has kind of made the public debut. Don't touch the chicken. I'm, I'm just trying to move them. Don't, give, don't. Give them, make them level. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, obviously, it's so a new front end. So the front end is covered. Is it? You can uh, tell it's new? Well, it, why is it covered if it's not new? Well, because they're sneaky. They don't uh, want you to know they're not going to change it for another 10 years. <laughs> so then the cab is the same as the old one. Yes, it is. Right? So it's not an all-new truck, according to this prototype. Actually, we don't know much about this prototype. It's just what we can see in the images. Well, don't they have to be like four inches longer like everybody else? Well, they already are, actually. Yes. They were, Their like, Tundra they, cab is enormous. I know. Those guys and the Ford 150, they were the first ones to stretch those cabs. Well, I don't know. Does Dodge make a cab before them? Because the make cab was a giant way back when. I don't know, but 07, 08, was, that's when the Tundra was first coming out. Uh, yeah, I was, so, I was at the launch of that, and I remember how impressive that was and how that back window rolled down on their Crew Max, I think that's what they call it. So, so then they're covering the rear suspension up. And, oh, first, first, I don't know if we have a close-up of the uh, wheel of the prototype, but they're going to six lugs hubs. Well, that's good. That made the last one to do it. Everybody else has done it. <laughs> yes. Chef, so, Chef, Ram, Ram, Ram just did it last year. Yeah. Ram just did it in 2019. Zach? Did you happen to notice that one of the lugs is missing? On yes. that wheel, I didn't realize that. So, uh, this is a six lug wheel, but one of the lug nuts is missing. So, Toyota, you need to double check your wheel. It's all that power. <laughs> power! Give it in all she's got. Now, wait a minute, how can they then be got, you know, hiding the suspension when it looks like it's wrapped around the drive shaft? That's it, a good question. It really so, what are they the hiding? Suspension? Could it be a uh, multi link system, solid axle, independent rear? We don't think it's independent rear. I think it's a giant airbag on top of the pumpkin. A uh, giant you, airbag. Do you think they're doing what Ram is doing with air suspension? I coils? I don't know. It would be, be surprise me if Toyota copied Ram. That's kind of a. Not something I would expect. To also, be this to do. prototype has an exhaust pipe that's coming out here on the driver's side, which is a little odd because we don't see an exhaust pipe coming out the oh, other man. side. It's got grass skirts along there, man. It's a hula hula. Oh, it's Where's a hula girl? girl. It's like that girl. She can, she's right she there. can dance. And also, so that means that there's an internal combustion engine somewhere under there. Right. So right. I, I was thinking maybe it was a hydrogen electric fuel cell, you know, hydrogen fuel cell, but it looks like it's still an engine. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Though. We all know electric's coming. We know Tesla's got everybody and, excited and, about it. I think Ford will have it in three years. They're all going to come out with it. And we'll talk a little bit truck. more about electric trucks coming up. Okay. But so this is exciting. I'm really excited because this is the first time we see what Toyota is working on. And, you know, the tailgate is covered. People are saying it's going to have a new tailgate. But have you ever seen this wheel? Zach, can you go back to the passenger side the rear wheel, which is a very interesting design. Have you ever seen this? Must be those bead lockers. Is that a bead locker? Well, I don't know. So, I don't know if it's a bead lock wheel. Um, it looks almost like there's like a motor within the rim. It oh, could also be a wheel where... There's an electric motor in that? Is that I don't know. Thinking? I don't know. Was it that RAV4 they have that um, if you get the, their hybrid, it's, it is nothing but electric motors but, in the back? No yeah, but it's shaft. not inside the wheel. It's, it's, it's inside the, the transaxle. Really, that guy was in the axle on each end. There was motor on each end on that RAV4. But what do I know? Anyway, but what, what this could be also is like a wheel, a special wheel that they can attach instruments to. That you know, be. they did, they um, they measure torque at the wheel sometimes, and yeah. do all this kind of stuff. So that could be a wheel that measures stuff. 
So um, there's also news or there's also rumors out there that they say that the new Tundra will do about 30 MPGs. Well, that would be cool. So how would it do that? Well, it's going to be that diesel they talked about 20 years ago. Oh, jeez. You think so? Really? No, yeah. I don't think, I don't think diesel they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to do a diesel. Hybrid, maybe. A hybrid, hybrid diesel, man. Everybody else so a hybrid gas. What do you guys not? think? So some of you are saying that it will be a plug-in hybrid, uh, like um, Judam or Judadam 2. Um, uh, pickup truck plus SUV talk. Tim, Tim is here. Tim, thanks for uh, joining us, um, as always. So a lot of you guys are still joining and um, talking about these topics. Joseph Beal says that it can't possibly be a hybrid Tundra. It's not 2045 yet. Ouch. 2045, yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Um, basically, so, well, we all think the Tundra, you know, needs an update. They need an updated interior. They need new tech. And they're going to six lug wheels. I think because they want higher payloads, right? Yeah, well, you know what? That's what should be the contest. Who is going to be first? The Nissan Frontier or the Tundra? Which well, one's going to be updated first? It is a, going to be a, con a contest. 15 years, 20 years. Um, John years. Martin says V6 twin turbo. Uh, because they do have a twin turbo engine in the Lexus, mm. so uh, oh, they also have a ten speed automatic in the Lexus. There so, you go. I love so, ten speeds. So I, I don't know, Toyota. Uh, you still have a lot of secrets um, that we don't know. Uh, <laughs> That's the thing. That by the time they do come out with something, nobody will care. It'll be such old. You know, we've waited so too we'll, long. So we'll see. They're testing it against the Ford too. So um, oh, that's good. You know. We've so, seen that happen on the mountain where you know Ford will have every brand out there with a trailer. They all do that. They all buy each other's trucks, you know, and then they claim they don't. And I, I just get a kick out of these guys. They, they, no, they're, they they're watching each other like I a hawk. Know, they, especially now. I mean, in the old days, they would come out with a new truck like one guy would choose this year and be going turns. Well, now they just all of a sudden, boom, they'll watch each other and they'll have to outdo the other guy by one pound per foot pound. Or, it's amazing how competitive it is. It is. Well, you know, well, you let's switch to topics G to GMC. Yeah. You went to the GMC let's, thing. Yes. Now they're Heck towing yeah. 225 pounds, 1,000 pounds. That must be a hell of a goose now. 225,000 pounds. Well, you know so, what? That's kind of like when the Tundra came out and pulled the space shuttle all over the place. Yes. Well, so, so there's a lot of controversy about this, right? Yes. So, so first of all, um, they invited a TFL truck to, to see, you know, to GMC Chevy event. Right. It was going to be a Chevy Blazer drive program, which also happened this week. Uh, but they didn't quite tell us what the GMC unveiling they will be. They snuck it up on you. So then they, they invited us. They, uh, we, we went to the uh, marina. There's a right. boat shop, you know, yes. a boat repair shop, and it's all kind of fenced out. Uh -huh. There's fences all over the place. And, and there's a crane. You can kind of see the crane, right? And it's not even a gooseneck. You had a bumper pull on there, right? No. So what they did was they built a special hitch that mounted in the fifth wheel, you know, the four oh, pins. Yeah. So they put it on and it had like a post on it and then they put a cable around it. And they actually used like a oh, custom weird. made hitch to put a rope onto a custom made bar on the crane. Well, that's what I was wondering because to pull that kind of weight and not spin your tires, you'd have to put about 8,000 pounds in the bed. To get more to traction, get traction, right? You know? So that's what they're, I think, so we're thinking. I, I guess that and, whatever they did work, but yeah. And they didn't uh, pull it very far. It was about <laughs> maybe a hundred feet, right? It's like a space shuttle project. Um, and they didn't pull it very fast. Uh, but you see this bar here, the the silver bar. Yeah. So yeah. they had to customize or they had to modify the crane. The GMC people were telling me to freewheel it because the crane is powered itself. Sure. So they had to disconnect the train motors. Right. So it wouldn't um, actually, so yeah. it would freewheel. Unplug the battery. Uh, and, and then they built this bar, which is solid steel, and the bar bent. This, this tow bar that they used, the custom bar, it actually bowed. It became like a bow as they were pulling it. So that was but a lot of force. That makes it stronger. You put a little bend in things and that creates strength. There you go. So, so but how do we get here? Well, oh. uh, it's a brand new truck. <laughs> well, nobody's complaining about the way the GMC looks. We all complain, everybody complained about the Chevy. Yes. That's what I love, the high country. But this came out and it kind of looks like a 1500, so nobody really said a whole lot about looks. But I think, so I think they made a smart move. They, they heard all the controversy on the Silverado and they thought, well, we might change our grill a little bit. But I love I, those headlights, those are so cool. The stacked LEDs. So look so cool. So the space, everybody, oh, every, a lot of people were talking about Space Shuttle too because GMC mentioned something. Well, the Space Shuttle overall rig was like 292,000 pounds. So Toyota beat them then? Yeah, for, for, for weight. 
even though the shuttle itself weighs 150,000 pounds, that rig that the shuttle was on was a lot heavier um, overall. And the Toyota um, dragged it, I don't know how long. I, I, yeah, I think I think Tim is saying, you know, it was a longer distance, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Did they ask you to back it up like you did in that museum with that big airplane? They say, no. Andre, you got skills. Come back this thing. No, up. nobody wanted my <laughs> skills. No, nobody said anything. Um, somebody's asking, do you sell those hats? Those amazing no, Mr. Truck. Oh, I don't. Should I? Should I sell them? Guys, please write in your comments. Should Mr. Truck start selling his hats? Well, you, got, um, you guys give us, you know, five hundred dollars. We'll choke well, the chicken. Well, speaking, we'll send you a hat. Speaking of hats, right? So if you guys donate using Super Chat, five bucks gets you on the board. Ten bucks gets you a bumper sticker. Ten, uh, twenty-five bucks is a patch. You have patches. I have patches. And fifty bucks gets you a hat. But maybe for fifty bucks, or maybe a hundred bucks. There you go. There you, you go. Can get the Mr. Yeah. Truck hat. Well, I appreciate is... you liking my hat. I mean, it's made it stock show. I make always some hats at the stock show. Okay. I like it. It's You're hats. celebrating the stock show, basically. Yeah, I'm excited, man. There's there's cowgirls running all over the place. That's, like, that's that's great. Running all over the place. So let's talk briefly about the specs on the new GMC. Yes, you know, and we don't have an exact towing weight, though, right? They said it well in excess of thirty thousand pounds. Well, that could but be. But they didn't say right. Because Rams announced 35,100. Right. And so are they going to try to get to that? Because, I mean, they've been at 23,000 for so long. I was so glad that they've actually decided to join the rest of us and be competitive. And that's very, very good. And that 10-speed Allison's there. That's one thing I think the Rams should have done is gone to a 10-speed. But, you know, they didn't ask me. And that uh, and a bigger crew cab. But I know how the mega cab scenario goes. There's nothing wrong with that. But you look at the Ram, it doesn't look much different. Mm -hmm. Where the rest of these trucks, actually this one doesn't look much different. That looks a lot like the 1500. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, if you watch some of the video, like we have a video on TFL truck, where they, they first pulled out the trucks, they had the light duty half on sitting there uh, side by side yeah, next yeah. to the big heavy duties. Right, right. And they look very similar. The lights are the same, yeah, but everything is grill. scaled up. Yeah, yeah. They're taller and yeah. well, that grills are bigger. Well, has a pretty big grill too, bigger yes, than the old but this model. is much yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah, um, it's... it's it's quite the race, and I, you know, it's it's so cool what they're doing out there. Now, the question I have, you know, with Ram and with GM and with whatever Ford comes out with next week, is it going to be twelve ply tires? I mean, are they going to use the same old ten ply? I mean, you'd think that kind of way, like Ford on the four fifty is twelve ply. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, are they? Is this Ram doing twelve ply? Is GM doing twelve ply? What are they doing now to compensate for all that That's weight? That's a good question. You know, I mean, having the dually gives you more tires, but you also need a thicker tire, I would think. And then, too, then that's the next obvious question is, are these trailers, are getting, I know they got triple axle ones, which are good, but are they going to have a good enough brake system to stop that kind of weight? Can Ram stop 35,100? Right. And whatever GM does, can they stop it? And, and that's the part that I worry about the most is, you know, the future of the tires and the brakes. But I'm sure they, but, they thought about it, too. Yes. So we, we hope that they have a really good solution for well, that. Well, it's amazing because, like you were saying earlier, it's basically the year of the heavy-duty truck. Yeah. And everybody's trying to pull punches, right? So sure. we've seen a punch from Ram. Now there's yeah. a punch from GMC, and Chevy's not far behind. Right. They're unveiling right. a truck in Couple at the weeks. Chicago yeah. show yeah. as well, um, and the Ford is also in the mix. Yeah. Uh, there's no news about the midsize Ram. Somebody was asking. Uh, by the way, Mr. Truck, you're getting a lot of love here in the comments section. Oh, am I? Uh, yeah. People are saying that you're great. That you should sell. Uh, start selling. Uh, let me let me scroll. Yeah, show me the good stuff. Uh, uh, what, let's see. Where Holy this cow! Is. I want ten dollars. What? Let's see. I want ten dollars for the bumper. Bumper sticker. Oh. But they're saying you're great. Um, oh, well, see man, right there. Casey that. says we love Holy Ken. Holy cow! This is good. This is good. Can you choke the chicken really quick? Yes. Uh, we got five bucks from Lion Runner. Uh, Lion says for Toyota to make a Tundra that fits in his garage. Uh, Lion, how big is your garage? So if it's like mine, I have like a 19-foot space, oh, which is not very big. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Um, that, that exactly is what Ram did a long time ago when they decided to go with the six-foot-three bit. Even I, mean, I understand on a half ton trying to fit your garage, but when they did that to the heavy duties, I was against that. I thought, I want a bigger bed. If I, you know, if I'm pulling big trailers, if I'm pulling big loads, why do I care if it fits in a garage? But that was my opinion. But that's what Ram did. They. They sized them all it's up with those six foot three. Now they're called a six foot four. Yeah. So I, and half tons, I think you're fine. But I mean, don't do that to the heavy duties, man. Give them a real no, bed. no, no. Yeah, make it usable, make it know, useful. Tundra's doing um, that. They're going to go to the three quarter ton I'm just, diesel. I'm just angry at the home builders. 
Yeah. You know, they're building homes with small garages. Well, yeah, well yeah. they need to build homes with giant garages. It's the same guys who are building malls. They make them all for go-karts, you know. It's going to oh, work for go-karts no, in front of the no, mall. No. So yeah. a 19-foot yeah. garage is no good. And I know my house is a little bit older. But new homes, you know, sometimes they make 22-foot or 24-foot yeah. garages. Right. You need which, a, is, which is much better. Yeah. If you're going to get a 110 dually, you're, you know, you've got to have 24 feet. At least. So, so please, uh, this is a question to the builders. Build bigger garages. Um, so, so anyway, so G, GM came out with a carryover engine, basically. So 6.6 yeah. .6 liter Duramax. Yeah, right. And um, they're, they're claiming that that 10 speed will hold that torque curve better. And yes. so you have all those extra gears to hold the power so you don't have to keep increasing power. Right. Which is kind of interesting, even though Ram, you know, jumped to 1,000 pound feet of torque. Yes. So we're all excited about that and we knew it was yes. coming. Yes. And that is so awesome. So I don't know. I mean, that's... Uh, it's, does that mean that GM is going to stop doing everything in a 373 rear and axle, or are they going to actually go to a 410? Did they ever say that? No. Axle ratios? No, they didn't say. I didn't actually ask specifically about all the axle ratios. I asked about the frame on the new GM heavy right, duty, right. and they said, uh, we can't tell you quite now. They, they wanted me to wait. Uh -huh. So um, so they're going to be unveiling more stuff in Chicago. So. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll learn a lot more. Sure, um, sure. But it's an interesting strategy. GM says, you know, we'll, we can keep our diesel for a while because it's kind of proven, right? It, yeah. it was used before. Well, look so, at the size of the head scoop. It's got two big snorkels. I mean, yes. it's not like the, the one that they, they now, redesigned is, it. They yeah, redesigned it. Yeah, yes. This is like the whole hood's a scoop. I'm, yeah, it's right there. You, you can know see it's it. going to be sucking air. You need to suck air with all that diesel oh, power. Yes. Tell me this. This is what's surprising because, you know, we all know Chevy kind of takes the lead over GMC at announcing things. That's how the programs are lined up. You always see the Chevy first. And Chevy did announce this one first, and GMC kind of surprised you on it. And uh, the question I have is, is what's going on? Why did the GMC was allowed to announce over thirty thousand pound trailer and all these other details before Chevy? I mean, what's going on? Is, well, is GMC going to be the new truck leader for General Motors? Or I don't know, GMC but but that? GMC and Chevy, I think, always had this relationship where they they want to announce things in turn. Yeah. So it's like and you know, GMC Chevy was first at the yeah, time. Yeah. Well, but Chevy unveiled their truck look first right that's, and that's not true. much information right they unveiled the 10 speed in the chevrolet then gmc uh, says well yeah yeah we're using the same 10 speed yeah ellison branded transmission but we also have all this technology yeah you know the, the heads up display oh, oh tell me about is, the trailer there connection. is so much trade well that's what i'm saying i got to get there when we do the chevy thing and just get all those details because they, they, they've done uh, I've seen Limpert, the guys who make all these RV frames and, and axles and stuff. They came out with all these things for a horse trailer five years ago where, it, you know, you got your remote control, you use your phone to lock, drop your jacks, you use it to open your awning, you use it to turn on things. And now they can do all that from your truck, which it looks like a phone app, maybe one of the things in their dash that will so. check your gray tank level, your blue, your black tank, your all that stuff and turn on different things. and. And so that's been around a while. I'm glad to see it, but they, they've got a pretty big list of what's coming uh, for yeah, trailers. So, so they have this app called My GMC, right? right. And it's been, that right. app's been around for a couple, few years. So now they've added this new integration, and they're working with a company they called um, ASA Electronics. Uh -huh. So basically, it's kind of the standard for the trailer control that oh. you just talked about. I mean, that's a short name for NASA. Maybe it's NASA. ASA. I'm not sure. In ASA. Um, yes. But, um, like you said, you can control your trailer features for your camper, for right, example, right. or your horse trailer, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, living quarters? Yeah, horse trailers had that stuff for a while. Um, through your app. So you're using right. the same app as you're driving, you can actually control the features on your trailer, like maybe turn the AC on, right. maybe um, check the water heater temperature or wh whatever it may be. If it's so, a new trailer. Yeah. It's, it can't it's, be an old it's, one. It's got to be pretty new when you have that technology. It's the trailer is compatible, right? Right. And but, that's that's, yes. that's 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 very good. But that's, uh, two. I was so glad that they're putting that sticker in the door that tells you your combined gross, your mm -hmm. tongue weight, all you those things what? that the 1500 did. Yes. They're putting on the heavy duties, which is even more important yes. to get those numbers right. You know what? I opened the doors and I it? checked in. No oh. stickers. Well, they're a, a pre-production. Pre but we know it's coming. Yes. And we know it's a cab is bigger, four inches bigger. And you know what else we know? What? Besides the 10-speed branded transmission. And, and I want to clear that up a little bit because, you know, they call it a branded, uh, branded Allison, right? Yeah. 
Now, but GM it's... used to own all Allison. They sold them off to Penske or somebody, but they kept this one factory. It's okay. Keep going. Keep going. They kept this one factory that they made the T1000 Allison in. Yeah. And then that just got sold off too, not too long ago. But what, so what GM has been doing for years now, according to my transmission guy, is they've been making their own Allison so they can buy the casing, they buy the clutch packs, part of the planetaries. But the electronics is made by GM, the solenoids and all that. Okay. So you're still getting an Allison, with, with, which is partially GM, and that's how that is. And, you know, we'll see how that works. But, you know, Allison is really a heavy duty, and I need to see one, make sure they have that spin on oil filter, all the Allison trademark things. But uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And, oh, okay. oh, John Lynn. <laughs> John Lim, 2079 Canadian. Uh, John's question is about the Honda Ridgeline. What is your, what's your opinion on the Honda Ridgeline? Well, it's, I don't like the way it looks. I like the concept. Personally, I like that it's a lightweight truck that's comfortable, but the look, I think, is wrong. Well, they, it's, it's, the new look you don't like? The new look The new look like. is like an El Camino to me. The old it's look was a bullfrog. Smooth. Yeah, right. I, I like, well, that's the new, exp the new Rangers kind of, you know, Smoothed out. Smoothed out. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I like it. I mean, everybody gives me crap for liking it, but it's not well, one that I would buy to go haul trailers with. But no. As a secondary it's, it's vehicle, a capable I, truck. I, I think it has a place. I think if you if you live in a city, a Honda Ridgeline makes sense. Yeah. It's a little smaller. It's more comfortable. It's got independent suspension, and it's got some hauling capability. Not a lot, but but still considerable amount of uh, payload. Um, but I don't like it as far as, like, for where we live in Colorado, yeah, where you have yeah. big distances and you need to haul a lot of weight, it's not for that purpose. It's, yeah, it's pretty good for fuel mileage. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's the thing about when I was making my narrowing down my truck buying list, I looked at those, but they were all starting at like forty five thousand. They were quite a bit higher than all the rest of the midsize. <laughs> I guess we should call it a midsize. I don't know yes. what you want to call it, but uh, I'm sorry. Somebody said that the ears were bleeding. I'm sorry, is that the chicken? Is that the problem with the chicken? Why are your ears bleeding? Do we need, do we need to call 911 for you? Or I don't know. <laughs> I'm so I don't sorry. Understand. So it's sorry. Like, Maybe the chicken will go. My thing doesn't do anything. It doesn't go from down. So click, click, the, click the arrow. Oh, click the so, arrow. There you go. Okay. So um, should we uh, get s some more questions, Zach? Is there any more questions in the chat room that you noticed? Just a lot of debate about when the new Tundra will actually be revealed. That's a good question. So, Toyota is coming to the Chicago show. Okay. But there is no word. I don't think it's going to be a Tundra show news for them. Um, and I don't even know if it's a 2020. A lot of outlets, including TFL Truck, which mm -hmm. is ours, uh, we kind of labeled it as a 2020, thinking it's going to be unveiled later this year, maybe in Los Angeles or sometime in the fall, maybe in Texas. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know that yet for sure. So I think we're still about a year away from an updated Tundra because the 2019 is just went on sale just a couple months ago. So, so I think it's going to be some time before we see the next Tundra. Hey, you were out there with that truck towing a 225,000 pounds. Yes. Tell me this. Yes. Did you notice? Because the new mirrors are supposed to telescope power under power. Yes. yes. Could you see a partition where we look like a good split? Yes. Did you look at the mirrors? I, I did. Uh, do you, we have a uh, close-up of the front of the truck, uh, Zach? I can kind of show you on the GMC what the mirror, um, what the mirror looks it's like. It's a double leg, and I was trying to figure out if it has to be in that arm there because where the so, pivot is. So, I don't know if you could see it, but the arm that swings where the mirror right, swings, right. that stays in place. Well, what telescope? And, and only the upper part comes out further. Oh, that the, lid, the, the glass itself. The glass itself, that whole housing, not the really? housing that houses the glass. It slides. Well, I hope it's stable. It's, it slides this way. Okay. So this this stays. Yeah, because I've seen these for quite a while, and I could I just see a split where it would move. Well, that's wild. Yeah. You, so yeah. That has to have the housing, the vertical housing, is actually moving. That might make that mirror kind of ugly when it goes all the way out, because now you know they all look kind of the same with the ugliness on the inside. Well, maybe not. Maybe it'll be cool. Well, we'll have to check it when, the, when, when we see it. Now, too, when you were looking at that mirror, you were talking about that front bumper on the left side, that little plug. Yes. Uh, remember when Scott still yes. says when you plug in their block here? Yes, and it's there. Cool. And it, it was there. Good. Yeah, yes. that was good. But, two, you know, what else? The big news. Def tank. The def tank. And the two fillers are no longer under the hood <laughs> doing your little five-gallon 
thing under the hood. It's yes. such a wonderful time. I yes. love it. I love it. That's did not work. Sorry, guys. Now the mic just got popped a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. We got excited. Well, that's how I moved the chicken over because he was starting to, you know, get a little wild. So sorry about that, the, guys. We're getting oh, excited. That's why I'm so the death thing is no longer. Is, yeah. It's no longer hanging underneath the passenger side. Right. Uh, for the uh, on the GM heavy duty trucks. And that's an AT4 you can get now, so you can go off road with that puppy and not be dragging that tank everywhere. Yes, you the know? AT4 is a really cool truck. This it's is not cool really. For heavy I asked them if it's taller, if the AT4 is taller than the normal heavy duty. They said no, not much taller. There's nothing wrong with the mic. Is it still a mic issue? Yeah. Let's try this. I think Doc was just trying to fix it. Try that now. I can spit on it. That'll help. Oh, Taylor said much better. Oh, good. Cool. Um... Oh, we sound like a talk show. Well, that's good. Cool. Well, that's good. We're supposed to be, aren't we, a talk show? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so anyway, so a lot of excitement. Ford is going to announce something we're sure about the uh, next Super Duty. Yes, um, that's only a week away. Yeah. And so it'll be exciting. So we'll see if they kind of get into those crazy numbers like Ram did. If they get into different transmission options, see if they if they come out with a seven three gas that they've been talking about a while. Because you know usually. The American companies don't play that well. GM does plays that game a long time where we're going to change anything for ten years, but Ford and you know Ram they just keep popping them out. And now I'm so glad to see GM catch up. Mm -hmm. So now we you know we can all do thirty thousand pound trailers. Now we got to find a thirty five thousand pound trailer so we can test the Ram. Where How are we, we going to do, do that? that? Yeah, I think we got to pull two trailers again. We'll put a hitch on the back. Pull a bumper pull. We'll do the doubles. We did the doubles. Yes, yes, we, we can have. do that. We can get there. We could pull doubles. Thirty thousand pounds on one, five thousand on another. Oh, geez. yes, we can do that. That would Jeez. be so cool. So that'd um, be a cool looking rig, man. Two trailers like we used to do. So we have three questions prepared, and we have three minutes left. Let's do a lightning round. <laughs> lightning and we'll, round. And we'll also do some questions from the chat room. So Zach, if you can keep looking, if you can. Um, so, lightning round. So, Mark is asking, um, should he buy a 2018 Ram Heavy Duty 2500 or wait for the 2019? What are the trade off in waiting? What is the trade off in price? And also, Mark does not specify. Oh, he does 14,000 pounds for work. So, yes, so a three quarter ton truck is probably a necessity for Mark because he's towing 14,000 pounds a couple of times a week. For 14,000, 14, yeah. Yes. So oh, definitely a three-quarter yes, ton at least. Definitely, yeah. At least a, a three-quarter well, ton. Well, the diesel on a three-quarter ton will be fine. So uh, Trucker Dan gave us five bucks. Chicken. Oh, cool. Chicken. Okay. Um, Trucker Dan says, Mr. Truck, do you think a 32-foot tag-along travel trailer that weighs almost 9,000 pounds drive is too heavy and long for my F-150 2015? Wait, how much? It just went... He's got 9,000 pound drive. Well, then... So... Does that mean it's 11,000 wet? And, and also 32 feet long. Trucker Dan, that's a big trailer. Yeah, but I mean, anymore, 32 is not such a big deal. I mean, I, I hear keep, people keep telling me that, but if your axles are in the right spot, that's fine. That's not a problem. It's the weight. And so that's what we need to know. If you're going to... This is an RV trailer. Yeah. So you put your... You know, you fill up your your fresh tank, put your propane on there, throw in all your t toys in the back. I mean, you, uh, that could be at least you, a ten thousand, maybe eleven. Yeah, ten or eleven thousand pound trailer. And you're pushing a trucker then. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I know. Just, I, my 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 new one hundred and fifty, which is a three hundred and fifty five, has got the uh, heavy duty twenty package, all that. That's ready to tow twelve thousand eight hundred. And I'm looking, but then see, you know, half tons don't have much payload. So that's one reason to get a three quarter ton is to get double the payload. So you know you may be able to haul that kind of load, but you may only have to have just you, maybe one other person in the cab. You got to get all those numbers figured out. So that's. Uh, but he's talking about. Did we jump? Oh, that's a that's a guy question from here. On yeah, fifteen hundred. Okay. That's a trucker then question. One fifty. I see. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's that's just it. If you're if you're 11,000 pounds and you're not going up that gauntlet every day, I think you'd be okay if you're in Kansas. But, but, but you're pushing it. On where you live. I know Trucker Dan is a very experienced and driver. You, yes, and you also got to have make sure you get the heavy-duty towing package. You get also back, it's a lift on the back when they do that. And then you have the, the upgraded uh, you know, transmission cooler and all that. And you got a 355 with 373, which I'd like to have actually lowers your towing, which is weird. Mm -hmm. So And then you got to have 20-inch wheels. So if you don't have the right combination, you don't have that towing ability 
So that's why I do so much research so that I would knew what I was doing when I bought mine. But yeah. I mean, I, it depends. I, I wouldn't do that in the mountains every day. I wouldn't do that at all. But, but I mean, if you're going, you know, level ground, maybe. Um, so Mark's question had to do with 14,000 pounds and waiting for 2019 the Ram HD versus 2018. We don't know the pricing on the 2019s yet, and we don't know uh, several other things, but the additional torque on the three-quarter ton 2019 Rams. And he's looking at the diesels, right? That's what yeah, he says that on the 250. But he tolls, he, he tolls often, yeah. so I would recommend the diesel. So yeah. obviously that's a big investment, but if you're working it and if you're working 14,000 pounds weekly, I, I would say a diesel is really a requirement. Well, yeah, uh -huh. he's got a dump trailer. It means the guy's either self-employed or with somebody else. Yeah. So he could you know, write a lot of that off so taxes. So the only reason to wait is if you'd like a new interior in the Ram, um, yeah. they'll have the new interiors and higher torque. If if you want to save some money, maybe buy an 18 truck right now because they're probably going to be That's true. Time. That's true. There'd be a lot of uh, good rebates on the 18 because, you know, they've been selling the 18 half ton next to the 19 for a long time. Um, really quickly, um, Gabriel sent in a question. Um, about an F-150, do you think the Ram 1500 interiors, the new ones, will push forth into stepping up their game on the interiors and, you know, besting the interior game? I thought they would have done that a long time ago, but I think they will. I mean, I, Ram has got the best looking interiors. I love the Rebels, my favorite. But why? The rest of the guys, I mean, they've been kind of hanging back a little. And, you know, Ford still so, has the Platinum Editions and a few of those things. Right. But I think that that is probably the next thing coming is uh, as better as you'll see some better interiors across the board. Because why would they just let Ram run away from that? Because right now Ram is doing that best interior and, you know, more wood, more leather than anybody else and all those things that they're Yeah, and even about. in their work trucks, you know, it kind of looks, they're using different materials, different yeah. plastics, right. um, and combining them in these clever ways. So I think Ram is doing a great job. And we know that an update to the F-150 is coming. Because Ford said an F-150 hybrid is going to be available next year, right? 2020. That, oh, that next year, that soon? Yeah, wow. th that's what they've been kind of promising. And they, they tend to hit their dates, especially in the F-150. And I think with that update, I think they'll step up their game. Well, the, in the a last big one way. was what, 15, 15? Yes, it, that's it's not been that already four ago. years ago. <laughs> really? That's 15? Well, it's 19 Holy now. Holy cow, by golly, it is. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I four years, wow. So four years seems well, like a short hard. time, but it's not short time in truck years anymore. But they upgraded to an 18. They put new grills yes. and new interiors, yes. so 18 was a pretty big refresh. Yeah, it was a decent refresh, but they didn't play with the interior too much. No. Yes, they've updated colors. it a little. They changed some colors, They updated yeah. it a little, and their limited trucks now have better interiors. But still, I think it needs to happen. Yes. Final question from Dustin, prepared question, then we'll take a couple more from the chat room. Dustin is asking, and this is an interesting question. It has to do with Trucker Dent's question, actually. Yeah. Um, Dustin tows an 8,000-pound boat at higher elevations in Utah from 5,000 feet above sea level to 7,000 feet above sea level, and he tows his boat three times a week. Holy cow, Dustin. Maybe you should leave your boat at the lake. Well, um, <laughs> anyway. See, we, you, you kind of think leaning toward the three-quarter ton. I'm kind of leaning toward the half ton, I think. Yeah, so he's asking half ton or three-quarter three yeah. quarter ton. The only thing that gives you an edge is he's talking about two or three times a week, which is a lot. It's a lot of towing. Yeah, and see, to me, 8,000 pounds is not nothing big for a half ton except for the fact that you're going up 7,000 feet. And that's, that's and back down. Good. Yeah, that's pretty good grade. So, yeah, I mean, so, I, I did, but the three quarter guns only have six speeds, so I don't know that there's a big difference there. Yeah, uh, so it's a trade off. Goes. And I think, I mean, it's only eight miles he's towing. Yes. It's a short distance. Right. So a half ton truck might work for this. But tell me about weight distribution. Actually, before you tell me about weight distribution on boats, uh, hit the oh. chicken. Yeah, the... Uh... JBTH, uh, 10 bucks Canadian. Thanks for all the great reviews, Mike, in uh, Kelowna, British Columbia. So thank you very much, Mike. Well, that's, if he's still looking at, he's, he's looking at Fords, right? The other guy was talking about Rams Fords. and Fords. Fords. On Ford on a three-quarter ton, you're not required to use a weight distributing hitch. Same way with JM and same way with the Ranger. We just figured all that stuff out. So there, you don't worry about weight distributing hitch, but on a half ton, you are going to have to have it. And since you've got it, it's a boat, right? Yeah. Equalizer hitch. But boats usually have a single ton, They have, right? a, well, most of them have a single ton, and it's a surge brake, and... Uh, I know it's called a single pull adapter that Equalizer has, and they're the only company that I know of that has claimed that their weight distributing hitch 
will allow the movement of a surge hitch. So when you're backing really? up, it still has enough movement to stack okay. and break your boat. So I know that they came out of that quite a while, but that single pull adapter allows you to, to branch out and, and still have your spring or your uh, spring arms out like a triangle. Or you can, you know, what we used to do is just buy another set of brackets and we would bring them clear in against the pole and just let them slide just almost straight back, and mm -hmm. that worked. Okay. So you got a couple options there uh, that the Equalizer has, and I think Gen Y, using the same kind of spring arms, could do something like that. So that is what you want to look at in a half tank, is you're definitely going to need weight distributing to level you out with that much weight. And, and help with towing. And right. with help sway control, yeah. yes. Come, especially coming down the hill. Yeah. So that's what you want to look at. Get get the right weight distributing hitch that will actually work with the surge brake. And then you're all set for that. So I'm kind of going to lean toward the half ton and, you know, that's how that is. That's how I would do I, it. I would lean it towards it too because it has to be a daily truck. Right. And, then and it's hard to drive a big... You know, yes, big and they, three quarter ton and, and, every day. And Ford in that 17, when it went to Luna, they made such a dramatic change in how that rides. That rides really well, but it still doesn't ride as good as a half ton. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how it is. So um, there's Damien Gutierrez says, don't forget that Fords have uh, massaging seats. Oh! Are you okay? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> massaging seats. And I, I love it. They're still, I, actually, actually, they don't call them massaging seats, they call them contour. Really? Yeah. It's it's a weird. Uh, it must be a legal thing. Oh, wow. those, it's a legal those thing. are the two things when I get rich uh, that I'm always going to get is the massaging seats and the adaptive cruise control. Those are my hey. hot, but I can't afford them right well, now. Well, you could you have an F-150 now. Yes, but I didn't so get any one of those. Can't you trade in your massaging seat for a regular seat? You think I can? Maybe I, I can. I get that seat in the middle. But oh, well, you know, I'm planning in three years. Whenever that electric sure. truck comes out, man, I'm going to be first in line. I'm there, man. I want that 100% torque off that electric engine, so I'm going to plan on keeping this one for about three years. But uh, yeah, yeah, maybe by then I'll make enough money and and have all that stuff so I can have a massaging seat and adaptive cruise control. I love adaptive cruise control. That's nice. Control. Um, Zach, is there any comments uh, sh we should address from this uh, chat room? Yeah, Buttercup28 was asking, would you support a collaboration between GM or FCA and Toyota to help Toyota build their own heavy-duty truck? No! So land no! Duty. You're never going to get that. That's like... Wait, three companies collaborating? No, no it said GM or FCA. Oh, yeah. GM Toyota. or FCA. No. No. Why not Ford? Okay, so so no. Ford collaborated with GM on the 10-speed automatic. Right, and now there's a talks about the VW deal, you know. So. And now Ford is talking about collaborating with VW to build trucks and vans. But I don't think Toyota's, um, Toyota's kind of conceded, you know, from what I know of Toyota. I don't think they would think so, anybody's good enough to collaborate with them. That's just my opinion. I mean, they made great vehicles that last forever, but they're on the conceded side. I think that they would think everybody else is beneath them. So I don't think, see that happening, but that's just my opinion. Well, I mean, it's happened before a little bit, and right with now, Toyota? well, Toyota Supra, you know the new sports car? Oh, Toyota Supra. They make a sports car? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is not a car show. So, But anyway, Toyota has collaborated with BMW on their sports cars. But I kind of see where you're going. Um, yeah. Toyota's been so dead fast and so focused on their trucks. Right. The Tacoma that's very successful. Yeah. And the Tundra, which is yeah, relatively they make, successful. They make great vehicles. I just don't see them wanting to share with anybody yeah maybe maybe they will maybe I can be full so of it's unlikely it's yeah. very unlikely but n never say never because now vw and four they're working together yeah that just seems kind of weird too i mean they're I two giant companies yeah, also yeah that's it's just weird but what do i know maybe ford's going to invade europe now with all these raptor rangers, raptor rangers next yeah. <laughs> this summer yeah. any other comments before we close no i think we're good to close well, thank you, and as always, so stay tuned because we have a lot of more news coming. Yes. You know, next week is going to be relatively quiet on news, but it's going to hit hard yeah. on February 4th and 5th when right. Chicago starts. Yeah. Just stay tuned, guys, and because it's going, next to be, week. it's going to be insane. But, you know, that's just it. It's January, so we're getting all this news on all three trucks in January. Well, February for Chevy, uh, for some of the stuff we're doing there. Sure. But Man, that's, Still. They're, they're hitting the ball. They're, they're hitting the ground running, yeah. and they're going to tell us all about it, and then we'll spend all summer driving them. That would be so cool. It is cool. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting year for trucks, and it's all happening now. So let's thank you for joining, and we'll be next week here on Thursday. You're available on Thursday, right? Yes. Okay. All right, see you on Thursday next week. I Let think. Me... I think. <laughs>
Well, we should be back on Wednesday. So go check out MrTruck.com. It's on the hat. Oh.